In this video I'll share with you how I built the SFX100 actuators for the do-it-yourself motion platform. The platform moves on four actuators allowing for roll, pitch and heave as well as simulated surge and sway. So for example if you accelerate hard the back two actuators will lower and the front ones will rise giving you the feeling of being pushed back into your seat from inertia. You can feel gear shifts, curbs and road bumps giving you a real sense of being in the vehicle or aircraft. The actuators are powered by 750 watt servo motors. That's 3000 watts total. It's a lot of power to move you but thankfully they don't draw anything like that from the power socket. Others have measured about 50 watts to hold the rig at the ready position. 80 watts for driving on flat smooth tracks and up to 200 watts for hard suspension Formula 1s on a rough track and upwards of 300 watts if you crash. If you live in a country that has 240 volts AC at the power outlets, you're in luck. But for others on 110 volts, you'll need to use a power converter. The reason for this is that there are no 110 volt servo drives that suit this rig. So here is a type of thing that you'll need. In order for the actuators to move, some free software called Sim Feedback receives physics from the game and translates them into actuator positions. The games currently available are Apart from putting them together, which is the easy bit, there are two major tasks for building the actuators. Getting the parts and 3D printing the components. It's no exaggeration that your 3D printer will be going 24-7 for two weeks to generate all the parts needed. I had access to a Zortrax M200 and I used ABS-Z Ultrat filament and the built-in profile for the slicer specific for this filament. In the M200 there are two fans. I found that I could eliminate layer splitting by setting the nozzle fan speed to zero. This was the only fan controllable in software. There was still some slight warping on the bottom of the pieces, but this didn't affect the build at all. The printer ran for about two weeks, 24-7, and a further four days on top of that, when I had to reprint the linear bearing mount at 70% infill, rather than the original 20% I had printed earlier. I'll explain later why I did this. If you don't have a 3D printer, building these actuators will give you the excuse that you've been waiting for. I do have an ANET A8 which cost about $270 Australian as a kit and I spent probably another $100 on parts to improve the design such as replacing the power supply and extruder. Many builders swear by the Prusa i3 which is on the expensive side for a kit but there are other printers that will get the job done. You will need to do some serious research before getting anything other than the Prusa i3 though. You'll need to check that SFX100 builders have successfully printed the parts on their specific printer that they are recommending. Commercial quotes for the parts to be printed for you can be astronomically expensive. If you decide to build a 3D printer kit, you will get the advantage of being able to print your own replacement parts. You can build other things when you need them, such as paddle shifters for the steering wheel. And of course, they're a lot of fun to build and learn about. If you already have a 3D printer, the slicer software should be flexible enough to allow for some serious tweaking, otherwise you'll end up with parts that are either too small or too large. Even a millimetre difference in size will give you a serious headache. The calibration tutorial is here. The SFX team used either Simplify 3D, which costs $149 US, or the software supplied with the Prusa i3 kit to print the parts. There are other free slicer softwares that you can use. I use the slicer supplied with the Zortrax. Most builders use PLA filament for its cost and ease of handling. It's proven to be strong enough even under serious load testing. I used ABS, which is even stronger than PLA, but much more difficult to print, but it was no problem for the Zortrax M200. You can get the 3D parts SDL files from here. 
So for each actuator you will need The next task is to order the other parts for the actuators. I got the 100mm square extrusion from Kinetic in Germany. The total cost, including postage, was $444 Australian. The contact details are... For the shaft, coupling, lead screw and bearings, I went directly to Changsha Terry Machinery. The contact person is Amy. The total was $379 Australian. Other parts for the mechanicals are I got the bolts from eBay for a total of $101 Australian. They were mostly black alloy steel with a DIN 912 head, which in other words is a round head with a hex socket. The other tools I used were these. 